I like this uh, chair. I wish I had a like a gif of flames back there, so it could be like a real fireside chat. Um, I was also really tempted to just put a loop of like cat gifs and just sit here silent for 30 minutes. Um, unfortunately, I'm not going to talk about cats, but I am going to talk about a few things that I've worked on and I think are kind of interesting and important. Um, the primary of which that most of you probably know me for is 4chan. Um, so nine and a half years, I founded 4chan. It's now I think the largest, you know, one of the largest BBSs in the world, and two things have really defined it over its lifespan, um, anonymity and ephemerality. Uh, coincidentally, two things that are becoming increasingly uncommon uh, on the internet now. And both of those things have really shaped the community and its output. So again, most people kind of know 4chan for, also I'm really sorry, I don't have like interesting things to show you, so you're gonna, I'm gonna have to talk your ear off for like 30 minutes, but, um, yeah, the two things that really define it are the anonymity and ephemerality, and it's kind of turned it into this uh, <laughs> like breeding ground for um, you know internet memes. And again, let's just pretend I'm showing them right now. But you know, over nine years, you know, thousands and thousands of of these memes have uh, been created uh, because of this kind of like perfect ecosystem that exists for um, you know creativity. Um, and I want to share with you kind of four quotes or anecdotes or stories because I actually don't remember most of the quotes, but uh, that I think really kind of touch on uh, how important and kind of illustrate how important those two things are, the anonymity and uh, ephemerality. Um, the first is f all the way back in 2008 at this, uh, I don't know what you'd call it, I guess conference that I attended called Computers, Freedom, and Privacy. And uh, there's a panel that I attended that was all about Facebook uh, photos and how terrifying it was uh, to have people tagging you in photos on Facebook. So if you remember, you know, way back in the day, Facebook didn't, you could upload photos, but you couldn't tag them. And then uh, around like 2007, 2008, they added the ability for your friends to tag you in photos. And so for a lot of people, this was um, kind of awesome at first, but then kind of like terrible, because then that meant that like your parents, your friends, you know, maybe your siblings could find all of these like really compromising uh, photos of you that you probably didn't want them to see. And uh, it was the first time that people started really using social networks for you know, employers and, and governments and stuff like that, you started to use Facebook and, and kind of public information um, against people. And around like kind of 2008 was the first time that kind of information, you know, kind of news stories started circulating about, um, you know, such and such wasn't offered a job or they lost their job because of something that, you know, again, like, you know, they called out sick and then their boss found out that they were just, you know, not actually sick and were just totally wasted off their ass. Um, and it's around the first time that that kind of started to happen. And uh, Nick Mathewson, who was one of the uh, lead contributors for the Tor project, which hopefully you know, Tor is a onion routing to anonymize your web traffic. And you know, so we sat there for 30 minutes. And Nick, at the end of this uh, this panel, said, "So you know, if uh, you know, if I understand correctly, what you're telling me is, you know, a friend with a camera is not my friend." And um, I think that was really you know interesting because it was like one of the first times that I, I kind of started to personally understand that you know there were certain kind of consequences associated with like living your life on the internet, um, which is now you know only kind of uh, made worse. Uh, and there's this kind of kind of coincidental like kind of a associated with that uh, this end of kind of like serendipity on the web because now that information is indexed and kind of easily available. I mean again like the photos were out there, but by adding tagging and kind of indexing them and making them searchable by anybody it enabled people to just find things more quickly. And it's kind of like unfortunate because, again, it kind of changes the way we live our lives, you know, our public lives on the internet now. Um, the second thing is, is a, a conversation I had with uh, Austin Hill at uh, TED in 2010. Um, I spoke at you know, TED and I gave a short talk there. And after TED, Austin came up to me and he had worked on one of the first kind of like, and I totally don't remember the name of it, unfortunately, but one of the first kind of like anonymous uh, web browsers way back in probably the late 90s or early 2000s. And it was a total you know, commercial failure and, and they went belly up. Um, I think the original design goal was um, like deviant Wall Street bankers didn't want their wives knowing what porn they looked at on the internet. Uh, and unfortunately back then there was not as large a market for that as there is now. So uh, you know, they couldn't make money and they, they went belly up. But um, you know, the bit about the talk that really resonated with him was uh, this idea of, and something he thought a lot about, which is kind of the, you know, with this kind of transition to data being, um, you know, kind of available and, and, you know, again, easily searchable, there was this kind of like end of the age of innocence, where if you think about it, you know, specifically with children, 
So you know, part of childhood is obviously um, you know, growing up is making mistakes and doing stupid things. And, and ideally learning from those things. Um, so it's your ability to kind of make mistakes, learn from them, but also for others to forget about them. And it's kind of hard probably to be, I, I don't know, because I'm 25 now, but uh, I imagine if you're like, you know, young now or a child and just kind of using the internet, um, I imagine most children, uh, you know, or teenagers are get end up on Facebook at one point. Um, but they're kind of like, those consequences of using Facebook are kind of like create these weird, um, you know, dynamics where again like you know if you do something if say you're arrested as a 13 year old uh, as a 25 year old when you're applying for a job like people can find that out um, it's also seen as like kind of you being a social outlier if you don't use something like Facebook I mean if you if you remember like I don't know probably a few here a few people here have moved as a child but I've moved a few times as a kid and moving like physically actually going from one place to another used to be this like reset of sorts where you could kind of pick up and go somewhere else and you know, if people didn't know you, if you didn't tell them things, like they didn't know things. Uh, and now kind of if you move to a new place, people probably the first thing they ask you is like, oh, like, let me add you on Facebook. And, you know, with kind of like the click of a mouse, they can find out all of these things about you that maybe you didn't, you know, kind of wanted to leave behind. And if you were to say something like, no, actually, I don't have a Facebook, they'd be like, you're weird. What are you hiding? Um, which is unfortunate that, that uh, that's the case. And so I think it's it's kind of disappointing now that we lack this kind of a reset of sorts. It concerns me especially because it's not only kind of like what we do or our past that haunts us, but it's because of that what we don't do. And so more recently, I've been um, working on this product, like kind of two products, Canvas and DrawQuest, that have to do with creativity. And I think one of the things that's really inspired me the most about Fortran is again, like it is one of the most creative communities on the web. Um, and it is that way because of this kind of anonymous ephemeral nature of the content. And you have this ability to kind of fail in public, which I think is really powerful. Um, you know, again, like failing is kind of doing things wrong and making mistakes or just like not kind of getting it for right the first time is like part of how everybody learns. And, you know, one of the most, you know, like in starting 4chan, part of the reason for the anonymity was kind of my dissatisfaction with other internet communities I had used where you know, it became kind of like a popularity contest where your registration date, your user ID, your kind of cachet within the community really kind of people attributed value to that. And if you were a new person to the community, they would read what you wrote and they're like, ah, fuck that guy. He doesn't know what he's talking about. Um, and so you weren't really judged for the content of what you said, but rather, you know, who you were and, um, you know, like kind of your standing amongst these these kind of, you know, they weren't your peers, basically. Like, they're, they were they were there, and, and you had to kind of, like, level up to become, like, kind of part of the cool kids crew. Um, and so on 4chan, like, theoretically, you know, if you're, like, really unfunny, and you post, like, 10 or 100 horrible threads that nobody likes, uh, if you finally on that, you know, say, 101st thread you create, you kind of hit it big, and everybody really likes what you did, they aren't like, oh, that guy, like, really sucked those past 100 threads. Like, I'm going to, you know, like, you know, screw him. Um, you know, they kind of you know, take it for face value and kind of like they, they judge you for for um, for what it's worth. And so I think kind of like to boil that down, um, I spoke at this thing, South by Southwest, a few years ago. And uh, my point was just like, you wouldn't want to learn to ride a bicycle, bicycle in like a football stadium, right? It's like the ability to kind of, or if you did, like you wouldn't really want people, you know, like your name to be up on the Jumbotron and everybody to know like, you know, Chris Poole uh, is the 10 year old who's like falling on his ass, you know, in front of the whole crowd of, you know, kind of like, you know, like, I mean, again, it affects the way you think, of, you know, you carry yourself because you're embarrassed and it also um, kind of, you know, affects the way that people think of you. Um, so I think that ability to kind of like, you know, be creative and kind of like push boundaries and, and, you know, kind of your own personal limits it publicly is really powerful. Um, and the last uh, boring anecdote that I'll share with you is, uh, uh, I did this presentation with Mr. Dube, who's fucking amazing. If you don't know who he is, his name is R Ricardo Cabello, and he's a, an artist based in Spain. And, and we did this uh, project for like an art hack day, and we built this. I called it an internet roller coaster. He really didn't like the internet roller coaster thing, but it was this kind of like a chat layer that lived on top of websites, so kind of like a annotation platform. And as we were working on this product, like the thing that was really important to us was. Uh, lack of an archive and we started to think like oh this is really cool but what's even more cool is that in order to experience this if you have to like be there in the moment you know you can't you can't uh you know, it's not like it's not tivo right you can't go back two days later and check out and see what all the people did like you actually have to experience it um with others kind of in the moment and you know we kind of talked about how 
in our opinion, like people probably spent the last 10 years asking themselves, um, <clears throat> how, like, why can't I store all of my MP3s on my iPod? You know, for like most kind of like consumers, like this was a big deal. If you remember back when like the first iPod came out, it was like, I have all this music, but I can't fit in my pocket. Uh, and you know, as time kind of went on, like this is now a solved problem, right? Like you can fit all of your songs in your pocket um, because now storage is a solved problem. I mean, you really don't have to delete anything ever again if you didn't want to. And so we kind of shifted from asking ourselves, you know, why can't I fit 80,000 songs in my pocket to like, you know, how do I delete my Facebook or how do I ensure the things I delete on Facebook are actually deleted? And so we shifted from this kind of, it, it's a, you know, a pretty stark contrast between I want to remember things or I want to save things to how do I like make sure that things are forgotten and how do I get rid of things? Um, and I think that's, I mean, that's really, I mean, uh, obviously like uh, to kind of tie this into a recent event, but like Prism, as I'm sure you're all aware, like Prism like probably wasn't possible 10 years ago because, um, you know, the cost of storing a gajillion, you know, bytes of information, that's a scientific number by the way, but, you know, storing all of that information, all of that, you know, so-called metadata um, just wasn't, it wasn't feasible. I mean, it was possible to say target, store targeted data, but it wasn't possible to collect mass, massive, you know, kind of amounts of data on that, on that scale. And so uh, there is like a very real kind of consequence to, to this problem. And so um, I think you see kind of more of a demand now. I mean, obviously there's been kind of backlash and some outrage uh, that's unfortunately kind of subsi subsided a bit uh, about programs like Prism, but um, I think like you see some, kind of some demand from people now in the form of like I'm, I hope people here are familiar with uh, well actually maybe not but uh, Snapchat I I receive like pretty amazing photo I mean and by amazing I mean like lots of uh, phallus um, lots of not naughty male photos on my <laughs> Snapchat that's the consequence of being the 4chan guy and making your Snapchat public but um, you know I think there it's interesting actually like a new app that just came out called I think Rando where you you send um, photos to strangers, and they, I think they get deleted, or maybe you collect them, but um, like I think you now you're kind of starting to see more of a demand of, again, like, I want to send something to somebody, but I want to make sure that it's forgotten. Um, so, and I think if you kind of, like, again, like, get deep and, and kind of zoom out, I mean, you know, there is kind of beauty in this idea that, like, nothing is forever, except a diamond, because De Beers has hammered that into my head that uh, diamonds are forever, but uh, you know, life isn't forever, right? You know, kind of like the pass, you know, the passage of time and the fact that we all theoretically die, um, is what kind of like makes things really special. Um, and I think that they'd be interesting to kind of like apply that concept more to data. Um, and I think, again, you're starting to see that in products and you see it on sites like 4chan, but the kind of overall trend of the web right now is that, uh, again, you should be connected to all of your friends at all times and you need to know exactly what they're doing at all times. And, you know, God forbid you do something wrong and don't want people to remember it 10 years from now. Uh, and so those are kind of like, I mean, I think, um, you know, it's been really fascinating to kind of see those, um, you know, kind of these shifts just in really, I mean, not not necessarily just the past five years, but I think again, starting with kind of that that quote from 2008 with, with Nick and, and trying to actually think back to a time where tagging on Facebook was, was a new thing and wasn't just commonplace. Um, you know, it, it was actually rare to, to find yourself tagged in a photo at one point in time. Um, and now where that's, you know, that's just the, the norm, um, it's interesting and, and you know, like I said in this, you know, that TED talk I gave a few years ago, sites like 4chan are increasingly becoming uh, kind of where it's the dinosaurs of the web. I mean, if you've looked at the website, it's very clearly not designed in the past decade. Uh, it's a very kind of cryptic, arch archaic kind of, you know, I, I, we're not going to win any design awards. But, um, you know, what it does have is, again, like these kind of, uh, you know, two very kind of really interesting, uh, I think, and really important kind of facets to it, uh, you know, again, both the anonymity and ephemerality, and, and it, like kind of actually born out of, at least the ephemerality part, originally it was born out of storage not being a solved problem. I was 15, uh, you know, the site is funded by the Bank of Mom, which is my mother's credit card. Which she had no idea what I was doing with it, but she very generously let me purchase servers with it. Um, but I couldn't afford, you know, like I couldn't afford to store all of the photos posted to 4chan, and so 4chan it was designed to delete itself, and so that kind of unwittingly became this really, um, you know, important piece of the site. Um, so I guess uh, the the point of this, if if there is one, is that um, if for the people out here who actually work on web products or any sort of a product, really, I think 
uh, again, it's it's in vogue right now, or it's really sexy to uh, again to offer people unlimited storage and everything. But I'd I challenge you to kind of think twice about that, and if that's really what you want or what your users want, and to again consider kind of uh, you know building these kind of more ephemeral kind of anonymous uh, communities. So that's my spiel. Uh, unfortunately, I still don't have cat pictures, so. Uh, I'm wondering if anybody has any comments or questions or wants to just shout memes at me. I don't know. Okay. Well, at least we can shout memes. No? All right. Well, I got nothing after that. Okay. Here we go. Oh, wait. There's two people. Am I going to space? Uh, I, I don't know that I'm eligible for that, actually. So. For those who don't know, 4chan likes to put me on lists that I don't necessarily want to be on. Um, one was the Time 100 list, which is this kind of silly list of influential people. And uh, I ended up with something like 16 million votes. And I think Barack Obama ended up with like 200,000 because they downvoted him. Um, and I got to go to this really fancy party, and it was kind of like very fish out of water. My mom was my date, so it was like me and my mom got to like sit next to Oprah for two hours um, and admire Michelle Obama's uh, arms, which is like a meme in the US. Um, so yeah, they, they nominated me for this space thing where this company is going to send people into space. I don't think anybody's ever heard of this company. It's not like, you know, it's not like uh, Elon Musk's company, which is like the one that's doing all the crazy shit. It's this other company, and they're like, all right, we're going to put somebody in space in 10 years. Who wants to be the first on the ride? Which is essentially like, I'm like, Apollo 1, come on. Like, nobody wants to be the first person to go into space on a space vehicle. And so I think actually 4 chaners are more trying to like kill me or punish me for something <laughs> than actually treat me to something really cool. So, and unfortunately, I think it's, it's offered in uh, the UK, and you have to be a UK citizen. So I have like 10 years to become a UK citizen to be eligible. But yes. If I die in 10 years, you'll know why. Uh, did somebody else have a... Was it also about space? What? <laughs> oh, shit. Ah, uh, yeah. Wait, like all of Croatia? Ah, oh, fuck. Okay, well, this is... I'm surprised I haven't been, like, stabbed yet. Um, yeah, so we block countries from posting when we see a lot of uh, abuse coming from that country. No offense, Croatia. Um, <laughs> but it turns out a lot of spammers like to use uh, botnets in Croatia. Um, if you actually email me the IP address that's getting blocked right now, I can unblock that subnet. Not right this second, but I'll get somebody on it just means I'll do it tonight. <laughs> um, any other? Oh, you can just shout at me, by the way. I can't see shit, because this is like blinding. But feel free. Team, uh, 4chan. 4chan to this day is mostly just me. And that's actually probably like one of the biggest mistakes I've made over the past 10 years. Um, a, I've seen some shit. Uh, B, having an angry mob of 25 million people who disagree with everything you do is never uh, very fun. Or it's kind of fun for all the wrong reasons. But it's great to have 25 million people you get to fuck with. So uh, joke's on them. But um, yeah, you know, Fortune was founded when I was 15. I was, you know, just a guy, li teen living in mom's basement with nothing better to do. And, uh, you know, over the years, we've had a lot of really excellent volunteers. But um, I didn't have, like, a like a co-founder, like a founding team. I didn't have anybody that I really kind of franchised and made like a, an equal in terms of the, uh, you know, running the site. And again, like it's probably one of like the biggest mistakes I've ever made because uh, over 10 years, like it's not even that I'm burnt out. It's that like I've probably gone through like five burnouts at this point. It's like every other year you're just like, oh, I mean, this is the best thing ever. And the next year you're like, wow, why am I still doing this? Uh, I hate my life. So I think having people, like really good people that you trust to kind of like share that burden and also, uh, you know, God forbid, you know, having a successor. Uh, actually, the, the thing I'm probably asked, not the most, but like a lot on 4chan is what happens when you die? And the answer is I don't really know, but I think technically like it would go to my next of kin, which is my mom. 
and so I've uh, I've told them to look forward to like my mother being their new uh, glorious overlord, who like does not understand how to use computers. Has used 4chan. Actually, my grandmother's used 4chan. That's a scary. I actually I was driving and my grandmother called me. I have a friend in the passenger seat, and she started the conversation with. So I was on your website yesterday, and I was just like. Excuse me? Like, why you were on 4chan? I, I like I started with hi grandma, and then why were you on 4chan? And my friend in the seat was just like, what's happening? Uh, and she was like, yeah, like, I, and she'd actually like looked at some of the really like risque boards. And this is, I guess, I have a really liberal or progressive family, but she was like, yeah, I didn't see what the big deal was. It's like I don't understand why people want to advertise on your site. Like we had this shit in the 50s, and I was like, all right, grandma, like great. Now I know you're like a pornographer or something. Um, that was an interesting day. Uh, my my relationship with my grandma will never be the same. Um, yeah. Any other people want to shout at me? I feel really bad now that I know that Croatia is blocked on 4chan. Because part of the reason 4chan exists is because it was blocked in uh, the, you know, it's founded and, and uh, based on this website called Futaba Channel. And uh, Futaba and Nichan, this other text board, blocked non-Japanese IPs, and so it was like, oh, you get to watch, but you don't get to participate. And that's part of the reason 4chan exists, and now I know that I'm like, I am that evil person that I sought to defeat. So I'm gonna like, go jump off this boat now. So the last talk. Ooh, that 4chan has grown into? Um, it's also really hard to answer because I don't really know like life any other way. Um, I feel like, or especially because like I founded the site at such a young age, it's really defined a lot. I don't think it's necessarily defined me as a person, but it's defined a lot about kind of, I mean, how I've grown up. I guess maybe it has in that sense because it's kind of defined a lot about how I grew up and you know, offered people that I met, and I think relationships really define us and um, you know, opportunities that I was you know exposed to and. So in that sense, I mean, it, it really has kind of like, kind of created this, you know, this thread that I've kind of followed over the years. Um, but on the other hand, it's like, I don't know, like, I think if I had founded the site when I was in my, like, you know, I'm 25 now, so like in my 20s, and it would be very easy for me to say like, life was this way before and life was this way, you know, it'd be like kind of, uh, you know, BCE and CE. It's like before 4chan, after 4chan. Um, so I don't really know that, and so it's like when I think about kind of like the like any sort of emotional like you know am I proud am I sad am I afraid, um, it's kind of hard to say. But I think I think I probably am probably proud, um, not of anything I've done, but uh, I think you know again what I've kind of done is provided a, a venue for people to do really incredible things and sometimes some pretty terrible things, but uh, I think on the whole uh, some pretty great things and. Um, I think that's great. I mean, it, it's created. It's just like you know, providing a platform for people to kind of share ideas and meet one another, and and you know, put me on silly lists, and you know, rescue a cat from a cat abuser, and raid Habbo Hotel, and you know, obviously the you know, anonymous the group kind of traces its roots to fortune. I mean, that's really incredible. And so, I think being kind of a a witness and a participant, but more a witness to it all, and kind of I actually studied. I dropped out of school twice, but. When I was in school, I was studying anthropology, and so kind of having a front row seat to that is really incredible, and I, I'm really thankful for that opportunity. So, any other people want to yell at me? Cam oh God, um, the canvas question. Um, uh, so cam so yeah, canvas for those who don't know is a uh, so I started a venture backed company uh, three years ago now. And we launched a web product called Canvas, and uh, it did really well up until the point at which it hit this wall and stopped doing well. And um, you know, the, the purpose of Canvas was kind of like to kind of take 4chan and, and kind of explore ideas I had about 4chan, but didn't really want to implement on 4chan because, uh, again, like 4chaners are really particular and they really like the way that the site is. And if I were to change anything on a whim, they would, you know, they were there. I would either get like a pizza or a pipe bomb delivered to my door. Um, depending on like how how you know how much they liked the change, but so I started this other site that was kind of like in the same vein as 4chan. Um, it was an image board with a built-in remix function. 
I'm gone. Oh, I'm back. I'm back. Okay. Uh, so I had to see the the four channels are silencing me. Um, so I started the site with <laughs> built in. Re <laughs> Can I just use this thing? All right, let's do this instead. Oh wait. Hello? Huh? Does that work? Okay, kind of. Um, okay, let's try that. Um, so I started the site, and it, uh, as it turns out, people don't know how to remix, or people like most people uh, really enjoy like the output of communities like 4chan, but they don't necessarily want to be uh, participants in it. And thank you. Um, and so it kind of like we got to this point where you know we signed up a, a lot of people, and they were making really cool stuff with it, but then. Uh, you know, only a fraction of the community was creating content, which is, you know, I, I hope, think most people already know there's like the 20 or 2, 20, 80 or whatever like that kind of ratio of kind of creators, curators, and consumers. And so while our number of creators was pretty high, it, like it kind of hit this, this wall. And that actually led to another product that I launched five months ago. It's an iPad app called DrawQuest. And it was kind of as a direct result of that. It's uh, the, the reason we thought people really struggled with kind of remixing and, and editing photos was most people don't think of themselves as being like particularly creative or artistic, and so they kind of self-selected out of it. They were, again, like, I like seeing what other people are doing, but I don't really want to or know how to do that myself. And we thought that what they were really struggling with was this kind of personal issue of kind of dealing with the blank sheet of paper, you know, not really knowing how to get started. And so we launched this app that um, just sends you a daily, a daily prompt, like a daily challenge of a, uh, a prompt and a template and just kind of invites you to, you know, it's like, what's an example? Like draw a superhero. And instead, instead of having you draw a superhero from scratch, like we give you like a guy in a cape and we're just kind of like, you know, fill it in. Some more like Mr. Potato Head. Um, and we've actually, that's gone extremely well because um, again, like I think kind of getting the ball rolling for people is really important. And so we've had something like eight or nine million uh, like photos uploaded in the past, I want to say, yeah, like five months. And people are like making really incredible artwork with it. and people who, again, like probably didn't draw on a regular basis or didn't think of themselves as particularly good at drawing are like using the app really regularly. And so I think that's really, um, really awesome to see. And I'd like to see more people doing that. I mean, that's really what I'm focusing on now is like kind of working on that app. Um, I tell people that like Canvas or this venture back company is like my day job where I have to put on pants and go to an office and, you know, work with people. And Fortune is my night job where I'm kind of like get home, like strip down into boxers and just like sit in front of the computer. Um, like a, a different, uh, very different like mindset you need to be in. Um, but yeah, I think working on like kind of ways to take kind of like the tools that exist to, that enable people to express themselves creatively, but actually kind of breaking it down and bringing it down to a level where average people can use those tools is, is really interesting. So I'd, like other examples might be like writing is a solved problem, like Microsoft Word exists, WordPress exists, and yet probably like very few people in this audience like write on a daily basis, maybe in a journal. Um, and again, like the problem there, I think is like, well, what do I write about, and who do I share it with? So, like, solving those kinds of problems that enable people to be more creative, I think, is, um, I don't know, a really interesting problem. That's what I've been kind of nerding out about recently. I spend a lot of time nerding out, and other things. Uh, any other people want to shine me? Okay, we've got three minutes, which means, or three questions. I don't know. So let's do one minute questions. Minutes. minutes okay. Future plans for 4chan or other projects? Um, yeah, I do actually, and I can't. Uh, well, for 4chan, I, I kind of I, I do, but I I'll give you a hint. I can't really talk about it. Um, but you know, 4chan is going to turn 10 years old in uh, what is it? It's July, I think. It's July, so in October, so just in a few months. And um, 10 years is a long fucking time. Uh, 10 years is like two thirds of my entire lifespan. Um, I'm terrible at math, don't correct me. But um, I mean, it's a long time, right? And um, you know, and I'll, you know, I've kind of always said that I'll, I'll be involved in the site for as long as it needs me to be and like for as long as people want to use it. I mean, I'll be there until like I'm the last guy awkwardly sitting using this massive website with like one other dude and we're just posting back and forth to one another. And then he goes on and I'm like just alone and it's horrible, it's like my own island. Um, but like I'm happy to, to do that, and I think though that again, like going back to the you know comment about how I never really had good partners, 
um, or good kind of. I, I never, I never did a good job. I had good partners. I just didn't do a good job at really like making them, um, you know, really kind of franchising them. Um, I think that's what I really want to work on over the next ten years. It's weird to say this, but like kind of thinking more about not just the next year, but the next ten years, and trying to get the site into a position where I mean, it's just kind of like so intertwined with myself personally. Again, it's like if I forget to pay a bill, or like I'm not on the internet for a week, or you know, a server breaks, which they do uh, more often than I would like. Like again, there's nobody else there to fix it, and so I think kind of trying to inter like kind of unwind the site for myself personally and kind of get it into a better place where there are more people who are kind of you know, in a position to help and you know kind of the financial picture is taken care of and and really kind of like giving it the foundation that it deserves to really kind of like be this thing that endures and and so uh, crap I'm giving away all of my my uh, my news posts from three months from now but um which I've already written most of but you know it's really I think about kind of like again thinking about things really long term and trying to get the site into a place where it's like if I got hit by a bus yesterday you know it doesn't go to my mother and like you know who does not know her way around the computer god bless her but uh you know she can bake a mean cookie though but uh you know really kind of giving into a place where it's like if something happens to me again hopefully not but i live in new york so maybe i get hit by a bus but if i get hit by a bus like yeah there's actually this term in for like programmers called bus factor where it's like the number of team members you can lose and like have a project go on and so like the fortune bus factor is one and i want to get that to like be a much higher number so so that's like the future plans is like trying to get things in, into a place where I can get hit by a bus and 4chan will still live. So I hope I don't get hit by a bus, but 25 people would be very, I would have a very angry funeral. They'd have to bury 4chan with me. So I'm trying to prevent that. I do actually still have the, the first servers. I kind of almost want to be buried with like the slash B server. That would be really cool. Um, so maybe we have time for one last question. Um, that is like you've like I've like seg faulted. I can't even answer that. Um, oh, it was. Uh, what would you do if new? Or, uh, what would you tell uh, new fags who can't try force? Which, if you don't know, in Fortune parlance is like, why do you suck at why do you suck at four chan? Um, probably don't use four chan because people will just remind you that you suck at four chan if you post on four chan. So. That's not a thing, though. Uh, so yeah. Uh, so the comment was, uh, it's summer, and everybody thinks that like we have this kind of like eternal summer thing going on. Uh, 4chan is less popular in the summer than it is, uh, you know, other times in the year. But also that kind of maybe is the same thing where it's like people think like horrible users come to the site in the summer when in fact it's actually probably all of the good people leave during the summer, which only leaves the terrible people, and so you just get this like endless, you know, kind of repeat of just shit posting um, so yeah everybody thought it was like college students for whatever reason have more free time in the summer and they post more but I think as it turns out it's actually like college students go and do shit during the summer which leaves all of our like yeah all of my my fellow basement dwelling compatriots to just shit up the site um, is that all the time we have or okay well I'm, that's it uh, thank you for listening to me drone on without pictures of cats